thank you so much for being here today. Sure, Ms. Stewart. I love uh, calculus videos. I know. Aren't they the best? So we're going to talk about uh, the motion of a particle on a number line. And I'm sure, you know, just walking around New Paltz the other day, I saw a whole bunch of particles zooming up and down on a number line. Right? Yeah. But yes. It's a very practical. <laughs> it is. It is. I use that all the time <laughs> when I get my groceries. But seriously, this is just a way to talk about how things move, direction, what direction they're moving in, when they're speeding up, when they're slowing down, when they're stopping, when they're turning direction. And certainly this, you can think of this as a problem about anything that's moving, you know, either vertically up and down. Sure, or but I mean, it's about dimension. the relationship between distance, velocity, and acceleration, really, that's which is, is one of those fundamental calculus Fundamental concepts, calculus right. concepts. So let's say I have a particle and its position at any time is given by this function. And I'm just interested in seeing what this interval is doing in the interval zero to three seconds. So this, this object, this particle is zooming around on the number line. It might be going left, it might be going right. Um, so I want us to describe the motion. What is this particle doing in the first three seconds? So again, we're picturing a particle, because I, these get, I, these yeah. get really kooky. So we're picturing a particle not following a curve, really, just going in a linear right. fashion, forward, back, forward, back, you know, maybe, exactly. some, maybe some little electron zipping up and down a number line or something right. like that. Here's okay. a, here, so it might, who knows, maybe it starts here, maybe it goes to the right, and then it turns around and goes left, and then turns around and then goes left some more, and then turns around. I mean, I, I'm not thinking of a function in, in terms of, you right. know what I'm I get, I okay, get what you're saying. It. Fantastic. Okay. So, how might I figure out when it's moving right and when it's moving left? Any ideas? Well, I mean, I think you could look for some kind of uh, positive or, or negative uh, change in its distance, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. I could actually plot a whole bunch of points where its position is and see when it's going in the positive direction, when it's going in the negative direction. But that might be a little cumbersome, especially if I don't have a calculator. So maybe velocity. I can look at the velocity. If we remember when the velocity is positive, that means I'm moving in a positive direction. When a velocity is negative, I'm moving in a negative direction. Make sense? That works for me. All right. All right. Let's take, <laughs> let's take the first derivative of that position, and we're going to call that velocity. And we're experts at this now. So if I want to know when the velocity is positive and negative, maybe I want to find critical points, right? Let's set this equal to zero, and that way I can see when the particle is at rest, when it's moving positive, when it's moving negative. So far, so good? Yeah, I'm with you. All right, so I'm finding my critical points. I'm just going to factor out a t. All right, so it looks like I have critical points at time equals zero and time equals four-thirds. That works for me. Okay. So these are places where the velocity is zero. Is zero. I, maybe I didn't need to say that. That was kind no, of what I'm you were saying. No, I'm glad you did because okay. I don't think I really... Okay, so I'm going to come over here. Is that going to work for you? And um, I'm just going to start at zero because my interval starts at zero. I don't really care what happens before zero. So there's one second, two seconds three seconds. And I'm going to kind of keep track of my velocity. All right? Is this going to work? Is this too slanty here? I think it's going to work. I think we're OK. I'm kind of. All right. So let's see. 4 thirds is going to be somewhere in here, right? Oh, wait. What the heck? 4 thirds is 1 and 1 third. So that's going to be pretty close to there. OK? So that's a critical point, and that's a critical point. So I want to see when my velocity is positive, when it's negative. So let's plug in a 1. That's going to be a positive times a negative. So that means my velocity is negative there. And in fact, I'm just going to do this. This means it's, my velocity is going to be negative in this whole interval. So that means if my velocity is negative, I'm mooning, mooning, <laughs> moving to the left. Okay, so I, this particle is moving left in this interval, up to four-thirds. All right, let's look at two. If I plug in something bigger than four-thirds, it's going to be a positive times a positive. So that's positive velocity 
That means all of these are going to be positive because there are no more critical points. And that means that particle is now moving right. So at four, four thirds, boom, that's my zero. So that's kind of when the particle is momentarily at rest. So I've turned around. So, so far, my little particle has moved to the left for a minute, or for one and one third seconds, and then turned around and moved back to the right. This is kind of fun. Right. Now, this, this problem again, I mean, this, you just kind of arbitrarily said, we're just interested in what happens between zero and three seconds. Exactly. Is that, okay. Right. Could have said anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay, now here's the next question. When is this particle speeding up and slowing down? Oh, well, that's interesting. So how am I going to change velocity? What do I do that when I'm changing velocity? What do I call that? Well, that would be acceleration, oh, of course. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, You're so good at this. Thanks. All right, so let's talk about the acceleration of something. And I think we can all agree that the acceleration is going to be the derivative of my velocity, or the second derivative of my position function. This might be confusing that I'm writing all of this, but I think we're okay. The second derivative of my position function is acceleration, so too is the first derivative of my velocity. All right, so let's take the derivative of my velocity. That gives me 6t minus 4. So it might be useful to find some potential inflection points and to kind of analyze when my acceleration is positive and negative. So I'm going to set that equal to zero. This is all stuff we've done before. Solve for t. That gives me four sixths. Can I call that two thirds? I think you can. OK. So you know what I'm going to do, Mr. Haas? What are you going to do? crazy, but okay. I'm going to make another number line under this one. That's a good idea. Line everything up, but this guy is going to be my acceleration. And I'm going to plunk two-thirds, so I don't know, but somewhere there. That's my potential change in acceleration or change in concavity, if you're thinking of it that way. So let's plug in some values that are bigger and smaller than it. Let's plug in zero. If I plug in a zero into my acceleration, do I get something positive or negative? You get a positive. Zero minus four. Oh, I'm four. sorry, you get a negative. I get a right? negative. Sorry, wrong place. That's okay, that's yep. okay. <clears throat> okay, how about after one? I mean, sorry, after <laughs> two-thirds, let's plug in <laughs> a one. Yes, yeah, so now you get a positive. Now get a positive. There's the positive. Okay. okay. And there are no more times when my acceleration is zero, so that's just going to continue as positives. Am I doing this right? Yep. All right. So now, what do we think this is going to tell me about when this particle is speeding up and slowing down? I mean, a negative acceleration, you might think that means you're slowing down, and a positive, you might think you're speeding up, but it's not that easy, is it, Mr. Haas? No, it's not. So let's, let's think about this. I, I like thinking about things falling, because we have a very intuitive sense of the acceleration of gravity. So if I throw some, if I throw this marker to the ground, it's going to speed up, right? Now, without velocity, if it's going down, be positive or negative? It would be, a, I guess, a negative velocity. Negative velocity, and the acceleration is pulling it in that same direction, so it's speeding up. If I'm throwing this marker up, velocity is positive, acceleration is pulling it in the other direction, so it's going to slow down. So basically, things are going to speed up if your velocity and your acceleration are in cahoots, <laughs> if you will. Right? If I have a positive velocity and a positive acceleration egging it on, I'm speeding up. But if I have a negative velocity, like the, thing, the marker being thrown down, and a negative acceleration, that's going to speed up too. So let's look at this. Let's look and see when the velocity and the acceleration agree, basically. So what's happening here? I'm particles moving to the left, and I have a negative acceleration. So that means, is it speeding up or slowing down? Well, I guess it's speeding up. Yeah, it's speeding up because I'm moving to the left, 
and I have a negative acceleration. This is a little confusing. How about after two-thirds? My acceleration is now positive, but my velocity is slowing down, which would make negative. sense. Negative, so that means I'm slowing down. Because yeah. at four-thirds, of course, its velocity is zero. And that's yeah. so great that you're thinking that intuitively. It's moving left, and then it's zero. So of course, that makes sense it's slowing down. Now I'm moving to the right. I have a positive velocity, and my acceleration is also positive. So I'm going to be speeding up again. Isn't that kind of fun?